The sheer number of people expected in Green Bay for next year's NFL draft has the city weighing some ideas mm -hmm. in terms of businesses and alcohol. One proposal suggests allowing bars and restaurants to stay open later. Fox Lemons' Andrew Mertens brings us a closer look at the proposal. Leaders stress they're nowhere near close to making a final decision. Green Bay Alderman Brian Johnson submitted a proposal request, which brings the possibility of allowing bars and restaurants to be opened until 4 a.m. during the 2025 draft. We recognize that, uh, you know, once that bar time hits, you're going to potentially push everybody out into the street at 2 a.m. because they can't remain in those facilities, and then they have no transportation uh, to, to be able to bring them back to their hotels or their lodging. So we want to be able to create a larger window. Johnson says he has been discussing with the Brown County Tavern League about potential challenges related to the draft. The Brown County Tavern League tells Fox 11 they are not pushing for legislation to extend bar hours. They're more concerned about transportation. In a meeting Monday with Green Bay's Protection and Policy Committee, Tara Hansen, a Green Bay bar owner, talked about travel issues with previous Packers games. Two years ago when we had the playoff games, um, I got a call at 1240 at night. Now this is a quarter of what we are going to be expecting here. I got a call at 1240 at night saying that it was three and a half hours, between three and three and a half hours for an Uber or Lyft. If leaders do plan to move forward and allow bars to stay open later, it would have to go through the state legislative process. State Representative David Steffen, who represents the 4th District in Northeast Wisconsin, says he's hesitant about the idea at this point in time. Squeeze an extra two hours on bar time. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. I'm looking forward to more discussion and in particular, again, uh, getting reassurance from the law enforcement community that they are okay with this expansion of hours. The draft could bring as many as 250,000 people to the area and leaders agree transportation needs to be addressed. We just want to make sure that we have enough time to safely move people around and, and have you know enough vehicles, whether it be Uber, shuttles, Lyft, uh, you know, we have to work very hard to get that infrastructure in place. In Green Bay, Andrew Mertens, Fox 11 News. Can you tell me a little bit about the proposal? And are you, would you say you were the author of it or kind of part no. of it? Or? Uh, I would say I submitted the request. Submitted the request, okay. Uh, for staff to look at it. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, this is something that the Tavern League came to us in partnership. Uh, they've always been great partners in, in recognizing and forecasting you know, possible challenges that might come, especially from large scale events. So uh, we really appreciate their thoughtfulness in, in you know, bringing up some solutions that, that we can proactively address a year out so that way they don't become bigger problems when the draft is here. So is this proposal more not just, say, extending bar time? Is it other things? Obviously, because I know when I talked to Tavern League, they gave me like a written statement yeah, essentially yeah. of, you know, their big thing was transportation, especially. So is this kind of trying to encompass all that? Is this proposal mainly just getting it out there now of, hey, we know we need to do something, you know, before it's, you know, before the draft is here? Yeah, I mean, look, they've got, I mean, they, they you know, we've collaboratively talked with them for about a half a dozen different things that we think we can do here in the city. One of them is, uh, of course, extending the bar hours until 4 a.m. That's not something that we're going to do at the local level. That is completely a state level decision. Um, we're happy to engage in that conversation and we'll react accordingly. Um, but at the end of the day, it's about delivering safety and solutions. And so uh, we recognize that, uh, you know, once that bar time hits, you're going to potentially push everybody out into the street at 2 a.m. because they can't remain in those facilities and then they have no transportation uh, to, to be able to bring them back to their hotels or their lodging. So we want to be able to create a larger window where we can work together and, and have a transportation infrastructure that can move people around efficiently. Yeah, so it's kind of like the way I look at it, almost two parts of, yes, extending bar time, but also helping with finding transportation. So it's almost like sending that bar time, kind of like trying to help elongate it to where you, you have more time to, yeah, you know, that's exactly right. rise and logistics, stuff like that. Yeah, look, you're gonna, I mean, we, we have to find a way to move thousands of people around. And to be able to, to, to do that with our existing transportation infrastructure in a matter of, of minutes just doesn't work very well. Many of the other communities that, that have these types of big events, 4 a.m. is a very standard bar hour time. So it's, it's not like we're doing anything that's unprecedented here. Um, you know, we just want to make sure that we have enough time to safely move people around and, and have, you know, enough vehicles, whether it be Uber, shuttles, Lyft. Uh, you know, we have to work very hard to get that infrastructure in place. Uh, but it's still going to take time, right? So 2 a.m., 
uh, that clock strikes, um, people can't stay in the bars anymore. They have to get onto the street, and then that doesn't create a really good visitor experience. And at the end of the day, that's what this is about. How do we create a world-class visitor experience so that when people come here to experience the draft, they want to come back, that the draft wants to come back? These are all things that we have to think about holistically. Yeah. Um, obviously, going to be people with concerns of if it goes, obviously, if it goes through, even just reading it right now, mm -hmm. you know, people, like they say, you know, they, they, they see, oh, keeping them open until 4 a.m., uh, you know, so for any criticisms, especially, like, you know, some people would say, oh, it's just a money grab, or, you know, trying mm -hmm. to get more money out of people so that because since the bars are open longer, they can be there longer. Can you just get into, the, you know, your reasoning of, that's not necessarily the case here. No. Yeah, look at the, I mean, we have visitors that are coming potentially from all over the world to visit Green Bay, Wisconsin, and they want to spend their money while they're here, and they want to support our small businesses. We need to be able to make that easy to do, uh, but we need to be able to do it in a way that creates a safe environment for them to do so. So we, you know, everything from transportation and shuttles that'll move people around our community uh, to making sure that we can extend hours and premises to make, you know, so that people can, can really enjoy what our community has to offer. Uh, of course, I know there'll always be critics uh, around anything that we do, and, and we recognize that there are some concerns that come with this too. So this is by no means a knee-jerk reaction to say, you know, go do this. It's, uh, it's really taking a step back saying, what are some, some problems that could potentially come from an event of this magnitude, and how do we proactively address it to make sure that we can, you know, make sure that people have this world-class visitor experience while keeping a really safe condition here in our community. Yeah, yeah. Um, just before I was here, I know I'm talking the phone about a little bit. Mm -hmm. I actually did chat a little bit with um, our state representative, David Stefan, that obviously represents that area, surrounding area, mm -hmm. Lambeau Field and such, and, you know, his end right now, obviously, he doesn't know a whole lot about it, and it's still very, very uh, in its infancy of this proposal. But, mm -hmm. you know, even he said he was a little hesitant, but he, he wants to learn more from law enforcement, obviously, learn more from you guys. So can you talk more on that and, you know, the continuous collaboration that we're probably going to keep seeing, you know, until it, until next mm -hmm. uh, April? Yeah, right now we just have a, a list of a half a dozen things for our local agencies to, to consider. Right? No action is being taken. This is, this is the first step of a long process to engage all of the partners that will be impacted. We want to make sure that visitors have a good quality experience when they're here. We recognize where boundaries are, uh, but not every visitor does. Not even residents recognize where the boundary is between Green Bay and Ashwaubenon. So how do we create a consistent experience for our visitors that keep them safe, uh, that, that provide the tools and resources our law enforcement and other agencies need? And, you know, so really this is just, at the, uh, this is just the first step of many uh, to really make sure that we're addressing all of the things that come with an event of this size. Um, that uh, time frame of, you know, how many days it would be, say it goes through and extends four hours, what, what dates would that be through? Is it, would it be at specific days or just, yeah, just I'm that not even sure. general? I'm not even sure. You yeah. know, I, here's, here's what I'll tell you. Like, I, at the, and I know the bar hour piece is the part that is probably of most interest, you know, but we are looking at a number of things that we can handle at the local level. Everything from similar types of, of COVID relief uh, premise expansion ordinances that, that we had put in place uh, to be able to create sort of a door district or the ability for people to, to move freely between facilities, especially in that draft area. Uh, we want to be able to provide funding and resources so that we can advertise. Uh, we need to get the draft grounds to be bigger than what it is. We want people spending money throughout our community, not just within that very small footprint. When you have hundreds of thousands of people that are all trying to buy beverages, they're all trying to buy food, um, and you're trying to accommodate that in a very small footprint, it's very challenging to do. So if we can put in transportation infrastructure, and if we can have some level of ordinance relief uh, for our small businesses throughout our community, I think we can get that uh, investment to, to impact all of our small businesses rather than just a small area. I think the last thing I had was just, again, really highlighting this isn't just spending bar time is just trying to find solutions anywhere and especially with transportation yeah it's really trying to address all of the liquor laws that we have in place right now and where does it make sense to make some modifications which we have the ability to do at the local level where can we make those modifications to create a better experience not only for the patrons that that are coming here to experience the draft but for the small businesses that can benefit from it